In this video, I want to share with you how I hacked my brain to become a better artist and what you can do if you want to reach the next level of your artistic journey too. In the past few months, I've made more progress with my paintings than in the six years before that. And I'm also so much happier with my own art now. I finally feel like I have started to understand what works and what doesn't. Compositions, colors and motif choices have recently felt so much better and professional than before. And it all began when I started to make videos about other artists. When I had to do research for these videos, I slowly started to feel like I had been focusing on the wrong things in my art. I was so obsessed with capturing realism and painting every tiny detail of my reference that I completely lost sight of the big picture and the whole artwork itself. When I looked at the paintings of Monet, Van Gogh or Klimt, I was completely in love and whenever I looked at my own paintings, after admiring the beautiful water lilies of Monet or sunflowers of Van Gogh, I thought to myself, I would never paint like that, but if I had to pick a painting I would hang on my walls, I would never choose my own painting. I looked at my art and I felt that it had nothing of the qualities I admired so much in the art of those painters. While looking at Van Gogh, Monet or Klimt's paintings, I marveled at the rich color palettes, the bold brush strokes and abstractions. I began to see impressionist and abstract art with new eyes, and in a way I never had before. When I researched Egyptian art and collaborated with Dr. Colleen Darnell last year, it brought me even more in contact with art I didn't pay much attention to before. Ancient Egyptian and Impressionistic art have qualities that I couldn't find in realistic art. They have rich variation of texture and patterns, simplifications of shapes, a juxtaposition of contrasting colors, and they play with realistic and almost childlike naive elements. Unconsciously, I learned to appreciate these qualities and wanted to create them in my own art. The well-balanced color palette of Monet, for example, combined with the strangely shaped figures in Klimt's paintings and ancient Egyptian wall art, opened my eyes to an entirely new world of experiencing art. For the painting you can see in this video, I actually already applied some of the new techniques I learned. I also share those in detail with my students over on Patreon. And if you want to become part of this creative journey and learn how to improve your own art, you can do that by joining me on Patreon, where I offer over 100 step-by-step -step tutorials and full painting process videos, like the 4 hour long unedited painting process of this artwork, including reference, material list and sketch to print out. My videos are suitable for all skill levels, from total beginner to advanced artists. And on my new painting blog on my website, you can learn more info about specific tutorials. Just follow the link in the video description to learn more. Now, after finally seeing these characteristics I hadn't seen before, I suddenly started to recognize them in other artists' works as well. My husband, for example, who is a magnificent painter, incorporated abstract elements in his art for years. And now I could finally understand their qualities. And I began to include new elements to my paintings that I didn't do before. I started to look at things differently. And whenever I saw something that I liked, I didn't just leave it at that. Instead, I tried to understand why I liked it so much, so that I could finally like my own art as much as the art that other people create. So I began making some more or less radical changes to my art. One of the first things I implemented was to include a variety of patterns and textures in my paintings. Before, I just wanted to have everything painted exactly as it looked on my reference, and I would fill an area just in one color. But now I think about which texture or pattern would make my painting look better. And often it's everything but realism. A great book that helped me in this process is The Art of Drew Struzen, who created the greatest movie posters for Star Wars or Harry Potter back in the day with traditional media. His techniques are a complex mixture of patterns, textures and photorealism. I recently began to take his art book to guide me in finding ideas for solving problems in my art. For the Gustav Klimt inspired artwork of this video, for example, I actually took inspiration from his cross hashing technique and for another painting I applied his splattering paint technique. Now all of these improvements happened gradually to me. Some were conscious, like when I use a book to help me, but others were entirely unconscious, like being impressed by old masters and wanting to recreate what I admired. It wasn't that I wanted to paint more abstract. In fact, I find it very difficult to find the right balance in an artwork between abstraction and realism. But it kind of just happened. It felt to me as if I had reached a new level. 
Another thing that I do now is look at my painting and ask myself if I would hang it in my own home. If the answer is no, I still have to work on my piece or make an entirely different concept. Great inspiration for compositions and color palettes are for example interior design websites. The next thing I do to help me tremendously actually is before I even start thinking up a concept is to research how other artists have solved this exact problem. There are thousands of paintings from the past hundreds of years that I can take inspiration from as well as from contemporary artists. For example, if I want to include, let's say, animals in my paintings, I would look up how other artists do it first before I do it myself. You don't have to invent everything yourself. Not everyone is a genius and I'm definitely not one of those. So I rather learn from people who can do it better than me. And another thing I do is that I don't just paint what I personally want to paint, but I also think of what other people would like to have in their homes. I know it's not the thing that we are supposed to do. We are supposed to paint what we like and what has meaning to us. But sometimes they're just overlapping things. So you can paint something that you personally want, but that also other people would like to hang on their walls. So I like not to think only of myself, but I also take the tastes of other people into consideration, if that makes sense to you. And if you want to do the same and improve your art, I recommend doing the following things. Imagine you want to decorate your home. Which artist would you choose? If you can't come up with any artist, you need to broaden your horizon first by looking at many different kinds of art. The old masters are always a great source of inspiration, but you can also just go to the bookstore and look at art that inspire you or simply go on Pinterest. Whenever you find art that you would hang in your home, but it looks different from what you would paint, download the picture, take notes and analyze what these artworks make unique. You can even print your inspiration out and hang them in your studio space to get inspired by it every day. The next step is to apply these techniques in your art and make them work with your style. You can start making small changes like switching to a larger brush to make bolder brush strokes or taking inspiration from a color palette to improve your own color palette. You can also set a time limit to avoid overpainting your art. Van Gogh, for example, only painted a few hours on his artworks, which make them look super fresh. He painted with wild, ferocious movements, which one can actually see in the art itself. Knowing that can help you be more experimental in your painting process. Monet created numerous studies of the same object in different lighting conditions to understand the interplay of colors. Klimt studied Japanese woodblock prints and kimono patterns to incorporate them into his paintings. It is incredibly beneficial to learn from these masters. So I hope to continue my journey in this direction and I hope I could inspire you to do the same. And please share your biggest inspirations or book recommendations in the comment section. It might be valuable for all of us. See you in the next one. Bye bye.